everybody. My name is Kate Crontiris, and I'm going to share what I've learned about the art of listening over the past 12 years. I have three observations to share with you, and um, I've woven a couple of tips throughout as well. So the first thing I want you to do is close your eyes for 10 seconds and just listen. I'll tell you when it's time to open your eyes. open your eyes. Perhaps you heard the lawnmower outside, perhaps you heard deeply, perhaps you heard somebody breathing. The, the best articulation that I've um, ever heard for what listening is, is it's the art of making others eloquent. So the question I want to pose today is about how can we go from hearing sounds in a room to hearing eloquence? So every Sunday after breakfast, my family had family meeting. And this was our opportunity to resolve the grand questions of our small society. Um, in the week prior, there was an agenda on the refrigerator, and any citizens with pressing matters could register an item for discussion. My mom was the chair. My dad was the family secretary, um, introducing who was present at the meeting, uh, talking about old business, items of new business, and finally, important family milestones. There's actually a great, fam a great video of one of our family meetings um, in which the discussion topic is dessert. And my mother suggests that we, are, we should alternate between fruit and cookies. And my sister, who was about five at the time, suggests, what about fruit, cookie, cookie, fruit, cookie, cookie? And if you look back at the meeting notes for that day, my dad has written a Socratic dialogue ensued. So my first observation is that uh, to be a very skillful listener, it helps to have had the experience of really being listened to. I was lucky that I had parents who cared so deeply about what I had to say, but you don't have to rely on luck. Um, you can choose to surround yourselves with people who really listen to you, um, ju not just when there is a crisis or because they have to listen to you, perhaps they work for you. We can all think of a few people who are really just seem to be great listeners. Talk to those people regularly so that you're reminded of what good listening feels like and can do the same for others. When I was in college, I decided to explore a new form of dance that I'd always been curious about, West African dance. After a completely embarrassing first year of offbeat awkwardness, I finally mastered a wholly different language for expressing humor and vulnerability and strength. Um, and I'm now one of a handful of people in the world who know some very rare dances from the Mamu people of the Ivory Coast. Weird, right? I know. But I learned something about listening. So my second observation is that the body can often convey more information than the voice. 90% of human communication is nonverbal, which means that we're picking up all kinds of cues about what people are thinking and feeling by looking at their facial expression, observing how they position their body, or watching the physical reactions of other people um, who are listening. So you might improve your powers of listening by doing things that seem more like making noise and commotion dance, soccer, trapeze, whatever, anything that helps you attain a deeper state of embodiment so that you're better able to recognize human communication among others. So as I said, I've been facilitating professionally for a number of years now, I've worked with lots of different organizations that need to have some conversation in order to solve a strategic problem. And I also work as a graphic facilitator, which means that I illustrate conversations in real time. This allows me to add an element of art and imagination to my listening. But suffice it to say, I've heard a lot of people talk about a lot of stuff, and coherence is rare. Um, so <laughs> my last observation is that truly transformational group processes require listening on at least three levels. We've already talked about body language. The second level is the spoken content of the discussion. Here as a facilitator, I'm keeping a few things in mind um, at the same time. First, the thing that we're supposed to be talking about. Second, the live material that folks are sharing. And third, a kind of cache of what everybody has said. This is important because that's going to help me ask questions that draw together themes or offer options for moving forward. The third level relates to the emotional landscape in the room. Here I'm listening for subtle changes in tone or a particularly direct uh, question, for example. So many of us in this room are embedded in groups that are trying to accomplish ambitious things. Here's one idea for improving listening as a component of exercising leadership. Try shifting your uh, perspective of yourself in the group from leader or expert or participant to coach. This involves making fewer statements and asking more questions, modeling a kind of listening that empowers people to solve problems themselves instead of you solving their problems for them. 
so these are uh, my top observations about the art of listening. We're encouraged to share a challenge. While I've developed a lot of knowledge about listening to others, I have discovered that it's increasingly difficult for me to hear myself. So if anybody has some tips about how to listen to oneself more closely, I'm all ears. Thank you for listening.